responsible for an automobile accident. Yes. That both totaled your car and injured you and your child. Yes, Your Honor. When did this accident happen? What date? On May 6, Friday, 2022. What time of the day? Um, it was around um, 7.10, 7.20 a.m. Where were you going? I was going to drop off my son to his babysitter. Then where were you going? At work. Is that your regular route? Yeah. Your last name is? Espinosa. How old are you? 17. You were driving that morning? Yeah. Yeah is not an answer. Yeah. Yes is an answer. Who was in the car with you? My little sister. How old is she? 11. Do you have a driver's license? Now I do, yeah. Did you, on May 6th, have a driver's license? No. I assume you were taking your sister to school? Yes. And then you were taking yourself to school? Yes. This was in May. How long had you been driving your sister to school? Six months. Where was your mother? At work. Did you drop her off at work first? No. How does she get to work? Her own car. Who owns the car that you were driving? My mom. So your mom has two cars? Yes. What other adults live in your house? Just my mom. Your mother? Yes. Your sister? Yes. And you? Yeah. When was the car purchased that you were driving with your sister? It was a gift. Who was it a gift to? Me. Whose name is it in? My mom's. When did you get it? Month and year. When did... Don't speak to him. When did you get it? January. January of 2022? Yes. So that's why you had been driving your sister for six months? Yes. The car is in your name? Yes, Your Honor. You know that he has no right to drive a car. He had a driver's permit. I don't care if he had a permit. You know he has no right to drive a car with a minor in the car. Well, he took some classes, and we were told by the instructor... No, don't tell me what you were told by the instructor, madam. Your insurance company disclaimed on this if you had insurance because he's not allowed to drive a car. Is that correct? Yes. What insurance carrier do you have on your car? Triple A. Who insures the car that he was driving? Triple A. On your name? Yes. When he had this accident, the insurance company, Triple A, disclaimed on the accident because he was driving the car. Yes. Did they drop you from your policy? Did uh, they drop your policy? No. Did they raise your rates? Uh, no, because not... I was changing insurance at that time when so, the accident happened. So you had no insurance? I, he ha we, we had insurance. Just look at me. On the 6th of May, do you have proof that there was insurance on the car that he was driving? Yes, Your Honor. What carrier? Triple A. And when did you change carriers? It was May 5th but it wasn't going to be affected until the following week. So you had no insurance. I hadn't called AAA to yeah. let them know that I was changing insurance at that time. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> believe okay. I was changing... Just a second. You, mm -hmm. you have to understand, madam, that to make your life more comfortable so that you could go to work and your little girl could get to school, you let an unlicensed driver drive a car. You have to understand that because he could have killed her and the child, it's outrageous that you let your 17-year-old who didn't have a license drive your 11-year-old daughter, put them in a place where they were in harm's way. You're just very lucky that both of them weren't hurt. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right. If you think I'm being harsh, sir, I watched you when you walked in. You thought this whole thing was a joke. You came in smiling. It's not a smiling thing. You did the wrong thing, and if you start doing the wrong thing when you're 17 years old, when you're 27 years old, your mother will come visit you someplace where you don't want to be. Do you understand? I smile when I'm nervous. When I'm Excuse me? I smile when I'm nervous. You smile when you're nervous. Yeah. Well, your mother smiles when she's nervous, too, because she was yeah. smiling, too. Yeah. When you walked in here. Well, you're not smiling now. Are you mean you're not nervous now? You're not smiling now. Now you're not nervous. Now I would be nervous. If I were you, I would be nervous. See what I mean? Yeah. Tell me what happened 7.30 in the morning on the 6th of May, which was a school day and a work day. Okay, yes, Your Honor. So I was driving straight like normal on East, on Pleasant Valley. And as I was going on a green light into my intersection... Do you have a photograph? Do you have any... Yes. I'd like to see it. And May 6th was a Friday, mm -hmm. just so you know. May 6th yeah, was, was a Friday. Friday, yeah. Thanks. Your car is the red car? Yes, Your Honor. 
This doesn't tell me anything, actually. Um, it just shows your car totally destroyed. Do you have a police report? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see a police report. Yeah. And I'll put it so she can kind of see my car has gone. This is the diagram that the police prepared. Yes, Your Honor. So you were going straight. Yes, Your Honor. And he was making a left turn. Yes, Your Honor. And you were through the intersection. Yes. Looks as if you uh, were through the intersection. About to be. It was like in the middle of the intersection. What kind of citations were you issued, sir? Just without a license. What? Without a license. Okay. I'm just letting you know, Ms. Jimenez, the plaintiff had visible injuries that the police noted. Do you understand that? Yes. The airbags went off? All of them, Your Honor. Other than the marks that you had on you as a result of the seat belts and the airbags That's... going off, did you have any other injuries? So that was actually my son. Um, that was your son? Yeah, that was my son because of the um, seat... seat belts. Mine were my, both of my arms because the, when the airbags deployed, it crushed all my side. So both my arms were bleeding. You were making a left turn. She was going straight. Yes. You had a green light, but she was going straight, and she had a green light. Do you understand? Yes. That means you can't left turn. If she's going straight, that means she's got a green light. That's what it was. And you have to wait until she goes before you make a left turn. Yes. Paulina Cardozo claims Norma Jimenez and her 17-year-old son. Christopher Espinoza, O for damages resulting from a car crash. Okay. Now, when you got there, you started to yell at her. You want to tell me why? You want to tell me why you were yelling at her? I didn't even yell at her. I got to the place, and then there was somebody waiting for me and told me that she, um, she had just hit them, like the person that... There was a you witness can't tell that, me. Yeah. There was somebody he that hit, saw... He hit her. Boy, there was somebody that saw the accident. But that person, unfortunately, couldn't be here. Uh, okay. But... I'm asking you why you were yelling at her. Were you yet... Did you have a conversation with her? I never had a conversation with her. I just okay. asked her, are you okay? And then she said, they're taking my son to the hospital. That's all she said. And when, when I got there, the fighter fighter told me... No, don't tell me what anybody okay. told you, madam. Don't tell me what anybody told you. You called your mother? Yeah. You used your cell phone? No. How did you call her? My sister. You used your sister's? And she came right over. Yes. Miss Cardoza was there when your mother got there. Yes. Do you want to answer me? Did your mother and Miss Cardoza, were they at the scene at the same time at any time? No. Before she was taken to the hospital? No. When your mother says that she asked Miss Cardoza, are you okay, that wasn't true. No. Was it true or it wasn't true? It was true. It was true so that they... Well, how did she communicate with Miss Cardoza if she didn't ask her, if she wasn't there? I'm going to ask you again. Was your mother at the scene when Miss Cardoza was also at the scene? Yes. And did you tell your mother that the accident was Miss Cardoza's fault? No. What did you tell your mother? That we got in a car accident. She didn't ask you what happened? Come on. Yes. Come on. Your mother asked you what happened. Yes. And what did you tell her? What happened? Well, let me hear what you told your mother happened. I was going in e, e Pleasant Valley Road. I put my left turn signal to go to the left turn lane. You were in the left turn lane? Yes. And? I waited to turn and turn. And? I was there and she swerved in and hit me. She what? She swerved in and hit me. She swerved and hit you yes. while you were making a left turn. She yes. swerved into you. That's what you told your mother? Yes. Yeah. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000 we're finished. This court is adjourned. I feel like she was very fair. To my understanding, what they have told me is like he was allowed to drive. It's been a hardship for us, and that's why I let him drive. I was scared. I didn't know if he had broken something or something worse. I only asked her, are you guys okay? Like, what happened? Um, somebody told me that it was you that hit them. Till this day, it's haunting. Uh, my son doesn't like to get in the car anymore, so it's straining. He wasn't even cited for the accident. He was cited for not having a license. I think she thought it was my fault, and I feel like she still thinks it's my fault, but it, it was not my fault. She was the one that hit him. You need to have insurance and you need to know how to drive. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. 
This is a public service announcement to the governor of the state of California. Do everybody a favor. Propose legislation that mandates that if you drive without a license as an underage driver and you're caught and or have an accident, you are ineligible to get a driver's license until you're 25 years old. That would probably be a deterrent for some people. Something is wrong with the system. Those are my words for the day. He's suing his ex-girlfriend, Erica Christian, for personal property and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Case 2052, Henry versus Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Henry, what you're doing is suing the defendant with whom you had a relationship for a period of time for the return of property that you had in an apartment that you once shared and for filing a false restraining order, false police report. Yes, Your Honor. The defendant says that you never lived with her, that you damaged her front door, and you filed a restraining order against her that was false. So, Ms. Christian, I think I'm going to start with you. Yes, ma'am. According to the papers that were filed, you and Mr. Henry did, in fact, live together for a period of time up until... October 9th. Shh. Sorry. Up until October 9th of 1921. Yes, Your Honor. Of 2021, 1921, who hardly <laughs> almost the year of my birth. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. 2021, when he left. Yeah, without a note. Just a second. October of 2021. Then the information that I have contained in these papers indicate that he sort of came begging back. And that was in February. Yes, ma'am. Of 2022. And you took him back. Yes, ma'am. And he was living with you. You were living in the same apartment from February of 2022 no, until what you say in your answer is June of 2022, when for some reason you were looking through his phone. Now, you were looking through his phone because he was acting weird or whatever. Yes. That's June of 2022. You understand where I'm going, Miss Christian, don't you? Of course you do. So from February of 2022, February, March, April, May, for four and a half months, Mr. Henry and you occupied the same residence. No, ma'am. Your residence. No, ma'am. Well, that's what you say. No, ma'am. Oh. Well. He lived in his own apartment in Merritt Island when we okay. got back together. Here we go. On February 15th. 2022, he contacted me and we got back together. He had his own place and never lived with me again. He would stay over occasionally and bring a few things to make himself comfortable. On June 21st, I went through his phone because he was acting weird. Where was he when you went through his phone? He was asleep. He was asleep where? In my bed. Okay. In the apartment. Yes, I work okay, at it's 6 o'clock. In the apartment. Yes, ma'am. Of course, yes, ma'am. And I saw that he was setting up a date with the mother of his child. Yes, ma'am. I got upset, dropped off my son, and then came back home while he was packing. He told me he was taking my couch, TV, dresser, dining table, and everything in my apartment. So my next question to you is... Who paid for the couch? Me. I'd like to see a receipt. I don't have it. Who paid for the couch? It was a couple years ago. Shh. Sorry. Um, my brother, Adonis Glover, he's the one that gave me the furniture. Just a sec. He gave me the couch, the love seat, the lamp, you know, a few other things listed on that document. When did he give them to you? He gave it to me before me and Miss Christian moved in the first apartment. So let's go back. Where was the first place that you lived with the defendant? Coco, Florida. Okay. From when to when? From 2020 October to February, March 2021, because that's when her lease was up. Were you both on the lease in that apartment? No, I wasn't on that lease. Just you? Yes, ma'am. And that's the first place that you lived together? Yes. And why did you leave that place, Mr. Henry? She was relocating to Titusville. I helped her move into it, and I moved in as well. Does that sound familiar to you? I Don't have... Be very careful what you say to me, because I, when I say I read the papers and I have my own preconceived ideas of what this case is about based upon 50 years' worth of experience, be very careful what you say to me. Yes, ma'am. 
Does that sound familiar to you? No, ma'am, he is lying. He is lying about what? Adonis did not give him that furniture. Furniture was given to me, never was given- Just a second. So we're not talking about the furniture now, we're talking about when you lived together. Okay. You first lived someplace together and then moved into another place. Yes, ma'am. So that sounds familiar. Am I correct that this is all about furniture? No. Mr. Henry, value of property. She's not paying you for property, for furniture that was given to you that was secondhand. You have to understand that. If I find that it's your furniture, you're going to go and get it. Yes, that's what I was hoping. Just a second. Yeah. You're going to go and get it. Yes. If you can establish to me that it's your furniture, you can keep it. You're not married couple. I have a couple of issues with some things that I think that you did because I actually think that you were together and he was packing his things, but then the police were called and you told the police that he didn't live there. Isn't that right? Yes, okay. because- And just a second, and that wasn't true. It is true. Tell me where he was living. He was living in Merritt Island. Okay. Whenever we broke up in October, from October to February, we broke up. He reached out to me the day after Valentine's Day. We started talking. He was buying me gifts to try to get back in my good graces. He was doing all this extra stuff to try to get back in my good graces. We got back together. He never did move back in with me. He always did live in his apartment in Merritt Island. I work at six o'clock in the morning till 12 p.m. Sometimes whenever I didn't have a babysitter, he doesn't have a job, he would watch my son. That's why he had a key. That's why he had to spend the night bag and all of that. He would bring over his clothes, shoes, PlayStation, anything to make himself comfortable mm. to stay the night. And whenever the police were called, they made him collect all of those belongings and leave. They escorted him off the property, told him that he was not allowed to back. They told me that I, well, that's because if, if that's ha what's happened, that's because they believe you, which I don't. Okay. They definitely... That, that's because they believe you, and I don't, because if he was trying to get back in your graces, and he was living in his own space, and you weren't back together again, why in the world were you going through his phone? If you were just a casual gal, and a casual gal doesn't let him stay with her son because, well, he was available, and he and he's not working, so he watched my son, and he stayed over... That all sounds like a whole lot of who shot John. And it was convenient for you to be able to say he doesn't live here. So all I want to know, Miss Christian, is this case is mostly about furniture, used furniture. I also have a TV there. Do you have the receipt for it? Yes, I have a title. I'd like to see it. You have a TV in the house that belongs to him? So the TV was- a Just a second, that's either yes or no. No, the TV does not belong to him. Who does it belong to? The TV was a gift from him to me that I ended up paying off because he told me that when he bought it that it was bought cash. Whenever, That's months okay. later, I paid the TV off. No, you didn't. Just a shh. First, you're going to show me that you paid it off. I assume you have proof that you paid it off? I gave him cash for it because oh. I did not think okay. that we were ever going to break so, up. Well, you never thought you were going to break up. I thought he didn't live with you. Like... Just, I thought he didn't that, live with you. You don't didn't. buy TV for somebody that you don't live with, that you're not gonna watch I all the time. Eventually thought we were gonna move into a house together, Your Honor. Your Honor. Oh, don't that, tell me what you thought. The, you thought. the TV that okay. was bought was before I even okay. had nothing That's a PlayStation and Nintendo. That's property that's still at the apartment. Okay, these are things that you say are yours, yes. that you bought and paid for. Yes. Okay, all of these receipts. All of it, no help. Okay, so let's go beyond the point of now you're back together again because that's what I believe. He's in bed, you're going through his phone, you find he's making a date with the mother of his child, you get annoyed, you take your son to another location because you know that there's going to be an argument. You come back, there is an argument, yes. he wants to take stuff, whatever, police are called, you tell the police he doesn't live there, they escort him out. He wants his property now. You're not married people. Whoever paid for the property or whoever was the recipient of a gift for the property owns the property. That's simple. You know, that's what the law is. Raheem Henry claims his ex-girlfriend, Erica Christian, owes for personal property. Erica is countersuing for door damages and stolen property. Okay, he has a Nintendo, a PlayStation, Sony. Your Honor, he collected those. When Just a second. Them. A queen mattress and foundation. And we have May of 2022. This is a TV, an LED TV. Yes. That was my birthday present. Nah. What? Okay, so I have 
titles to these things. Do you have titles or receipts for any of these things? I don't have receipts for any of those things. He grabbed his PlayStation, his Switch, and everything whenever he left. The only thing that is in my apartment is the TV that he bought me for my birthday. May is my birthday. May 7th is my birthday. That was my birthday present that he bought for me. Did you take your Nintendo? No. Did I you? Haven't, I haven't had... Uh... Wow. Recently, that was something different. My storage unit was just broken into. This is why I don't have original documents. And she stole more of my property. I don't know that. Did you file a police report? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Did. did they ever find any of the property? In no, perhaps? not right now. Okay. The couch, whatever other furniture is there, mm -hmm. is how old? I mean, it used to be used furniture, so it was... It yeah, my brother Donis got it when he paid for it. It was like a kind of like a bundle deal for the apartment, like a lot of furnishing. And it was, I ended up giving him some money for, you know, looking out. Th and that was two, three years ago? Yeah, yeah. And it was used furniture at the time? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't nothing like brand new out yeah. of the seal. How much did you pay for the TV? I got taxed when I was like at 15, almost to $2,000, because it's a 60-inch smart TV. Okay. So what is it that you want, is my question. I want a court order to go get the rest of my property. I have what? I have to know what the rest of your property is. Yes. You have the TV. The TV. I have asthma medication. I have plantar she doesn't, arthritis. I want to tell you something. She threw out your asthma medication. I believe so, too. <laughs> she threw out your asthma medication. Yeah. What else? I have crutches. I have, you have what? Uh, crutches for and certain things. I have uh, you don't, PlayStation. Look, you don't, you don't need like, crutches. And the PlayStation, you said, was in the... Storage unit. Yeah. Well, I'm not interested in the storage unit. So far, I have a TV. What else? My mattress, my bed, my yeah, you stuff don't want that, that I have in the that. apartment. You don't want a mattress. Are you back with no. this lady now? No. Where are you living? I've been living on the streets. I've been living out of my car ever since this has been happening. Where are you going to put a mattress? I have a storage unit that I was going to just collect. I'm pretty much just trying to salvage what I can because I have things that sentimental stuff from my grandmother passing away, things that I really can't put a price tag on. I just want to be able to get a quarter to just get the rest of my belongings. I don't know what the rest of I have a TV. You have no place to put a mattress that's a couple of years old. So you really don't need that. I mean, I can give you an order to get your mattress, but what are you going to do with it? It's just going to cost you to go get it and to store it. So you really don't need it? I don't need it, but I would like to still get all of my property back. Like Just, the stuff that I paid for because I worked. I worked hard. I furnished I'm giving you your TV back. You're going to get the TV. I haven't figured out what else it is that you really want to make this whole thing worthwhile. I'm not giving you any money. Do you want the mattress back? You paid for it. You're entitled to it back. Yeah. I can give you an order for the mattress and the TV. Okay. And I okay. also have electronics like um from games the controllers just so much things that like tv mattress box spring he's going to come and get it with a marshal but he's coming to get it within five days from today so what if i pull up my bank statements to show that i gave him cash around the same time that whenever it was like pulled up and everything because i did give him cash for the tv for the bed for actually more than he ever even put into it let me explain something to you. Unless you have a check made out to him, I have a problem with somebody who lies to the police. Ma'am, I, I do. I have trouble with somebody who got very angry because her boyfriend, who was living there, watching her son, brought a TV, bought a mattress, bought a box spring, bought all of those things, and then you got annoyed that he was involved again with his child's mother. You dropped off your son someplace else to come back to have a fight with him. You did have an argument with him. Police were called. You said to the police, he doesn't live here. Your Honor, he moved he, out. Uh, he doesn't live here. That's what's here. Your Honor, I never moved he out. He moved out in we October. We had a whole business together. No, we, we do not. Creating. That business is in my name and I have the receipts to that too. I, you have to understand something. I know what happened. I don't believe you. Yeah, you have to. The truth. No, you're not. Yeah. You're not telling me the truth when, that when the police came, you said he doesn't live here. Yes. He doesn't live here. Put him outside. He took all of his belongings. Did he October. take his? Oh, no. May I finish? Oh. He took all of his belongings on October 9th. Whenever he left without a call, without a text message, without anything, he broke up with me and left. He got back in contact with me in February. Mind you, we never lived together after that. He was just staying was over to watch your son when you yes. got angry in June. 
Whenever, whenever we- It was we, June. It was June, four and a half months later. Which he would go back to his apartment. He would come, he never stayed more than a couple of nights consecutively. Okay, he's coming to get his TV, he's coming to get his mattress and box spring. Can we you have a counterclaim. my counterclaim? You have a counterclaim for damage to the front door. Yes, ma'am. Okay, damage to the front door. Take my front door down. Okay, when did he do that? Um, the day after he was police escorted, they told him not to come back, and the next day he came back and kicked my door down right in front of the police officer. So he came back with a police officer. And kicked my door down. Just a second. He came back with a police officer and the police officer was there when he broke into your apartment. Yes, and they were going to take him. No, no, t tell me what they were going to do. And they did nothing. Well, they that trespassed him from my apartment complex. I'm asking you, what you're telling me is, madam, which is why I have problems with you right from the get go. What you're telling me now is he came back to get his property the next day he didn't come back with, a, with a police officer. Yes. And what you're telling me, a police officer, and what you live in Florida? Yes. What you want me to believe that a police officer saw him kick down your door, go into your apartment, take property, and did nothing. That's what you want me to believe. He didn't not do anything. He was completely confused on who actually Don't lived tell me there. A, you're telling me a police officer was confused. I'm telling you the truth. They were very confused the on who officer actually lived there. Bring me just a second. He was they were trying to figure out if it was my apartment, his apartment. I had to go get my property manager, bring my lease that only had my name on it. You don't understand. The, the last place you lived with him full time, your name was on the lease too. Only yours. Correct. And you lived together. So now you took his lease and again, just in your name, and said, he's not on the lease, he doesn't live here. We broke up, though. Okay, and he all right, he's coming to get his left. TV, he's coming to get his mattress, Miss. Okay. and I, I would like to see a police had report. Had I would like book. to see. I also have stolen. an iPad. Don't, just bag. a second. Okay. You're done, you're going to get your TV, your mattress, and your box spring. Has accused his ex-girlfriend, Erica Christian, of keeping his personal property. Erica claims he broke through her door and stole her belongings. Now, yes, ma'am, I have uh, my Chromebook, my iPad, my office supplies, things that were stolen from my company that whenever he kicked my door down and took things out of my apartment that day. Okay, now let's get to the company. What kind of work were you involved with when you and the defendant lived together, Mr. Henry? I did all the graphic design. I made the business cards. Just a second. Were you involved in graphic design? Yes, I actually went just a second. Together? No, it was mainly me. And you did this over a computer, over a laptop? Over a tablet, over um, my iPad. So the business supplies that she's gonna tell me about mm. were for the graphic design business? Uh, yes, some you of the supplies, but I never stole anything. Uh, I just had an iPad that I worked on and I did graphic design on that was mine. I gave her cash for it. She found it on Amazon for me for a good deal. I was able to draw on it. She's never had access to it. It's always been my Apple ID on it. Where is it? I don't know. The day when I got when I got escorted out, she came out of the apartment. I was going in to get the rest of my belongings, and she was saying, "I can't find my iPad. You have it." And I right right then and there, I knew she found it and she took it and hid it. So the officer let me go inside to get my belongings. I looked in the closet where I had it wrapped up. Gone. I walked outside and was like, "Erica, where's my iPad? I paid for that. I do work on it. That is mine." She said, I don't know, it's gone, you must have it. Had this whole sob story about it. So still to this day, I have no idea. Okay, what else? My iPad that he stole the day that he broke into my apartment. My Chromebook that he stole the day that he broke into my apartment. Your what? My Chromebook, my laptop. What else? I have my printer that he stole. It's all right here, 600. Do you want me to just pass it to you? Did you take a printer? I was able, I'm so sorry. I wasn't able to leave Would with you? anything because they made me have to go through a civil suit because she started claiming stuff and saying it was hers and it wasn't mine. So the officer I didn't even let me go back inside the apartment. I want to know when you went in, in the presence of a police officer, whether you push down the door, kick down the door or not. Unless I have a police report, I don't actually believe that the police He was my escort, I actually met him. Did you take any electronics with you when you left? I didn't leave with anything. Okay, Judge, don't give me a whole bunch of papers. What I'd like to see is a police report or any other documentation that he took anything the day after you had him evicted from the apartment where he was living. She didn't even have me evicted. Shh. I have the receipts of the stuff that he stole. He said he didn't take anything. He said the police officer was there, wouldn't let him take a printer, 
I mean, th those are heavy electronics. Yeah. And that was the only other time he was in the apartment. He also checked my car. No, he didn't. Unless you have some sort of a police report for me, Miss Christian, I don't believe you. I think that you were really angry. I think that you were really angry because he left in October. You took him back in February. You found out that he was not being straight up front with you. And you were dishonest with the police, which is all part of being angry and felt that you were being taken advantage of. According to you, you were together so much so that he bought you a television set a month before you threw him out for your birthday that cost thousands of dollars. That's what you just told me. Ma'am, he bought that TV in February for me for an early birthday present. He bought it for an early birthday oh, present oh and told he's me- He's coming to get, listen to me, he's coming to get his TV, he's coming to get his box springs, he's coming to get I his also, mattress. It's a court order. It's a court order with a marshal in five days from today. Do you understand? I also have- um, Five days from my today. My countersuit, my yep. Re yep. false police reports, the false injunction, everything that he did. I, I have to tell you something. The same way that I'm not entertaining because it's over. This fib that you told to the police, this which caused him to be, uh, don't interrupt me. I'm not entertaining. You filed restraining orders against each other? She filed. Just a second. You filed restraining orders against each other. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a restraining order against her? Yes, Ni but it was dismissed. I said, do you have one currently? The answer is no. No. Do you have a restraining order against him? No, ma'am. Ah, good. It's exactly what I thought because neither one of you, you have to say goodbye, you have to stop being angry, but you have to give him back his property. I only wanted the restraint. TV, mattress, box spring, five days from today. Counterclaims dismissed, we're finished with this case. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. Melissa Duran is suing her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, for wrongful eviction and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Be seated. You used to live. Yes. And you are suing her for evicting you from that place. You want a whole bunch of money. You're suing her for $10,000 for your moving expenses, for assault, for emotional distress because you had to move. Ms. Shaw says that your behavior caused you to be evicted. You violated the rules, and that's why you were served notice of eviction. So first, let me know when you started living at the property that is managed by the defendant. In 2018. Did you have a lease? Yes, I did. did do you have a copy of that lease with yes, you? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, so this initial lease was August of 2019, and it terminated on July 31st, 2020. It provided for three people to live in the apartment. Okay, and was the lease renewed? Nope. Okay, and so then you became a month-to-month -month tenant? Yes. And that was in February of 2020? They also increased the rent. That's okay, they're allowed to do that. That's a business. No, I know. They're allowed to do that. When your lease was extended on a month-to-month -month basis after February of 2020, would you tell me if the same people lived in the apartment as were on the original lease? No. So more people moved in? Yes. Who? That would be my sisters and my mother. Sisters? Yes. Two sisters? Yes. They and were when did they move in? Maybe about, uh, maybe 2020, maybe? I'm not, couldn't really be positive. So that would have been in violation of your original lease? Yes. And it was an apartment that you were yes. renting. And the apartment complex has a pool. Yes, it does. And the incident around circumstances surrounding this eviction that was served on you, that happened in what month and year? It was in um, June of this year. How long, Miss Shaw, have you been the property manager? Since 
the end of November of last year. November of 2021. Yes. And in November of 2021, did you know that there were additional people living in the house? Yes. And didn't tell her that they had to vacate, that it was in violation of the terms of our underlying lease? I had that morning, actually, when the confrontation happened. No, I'm talking about, pay attention. My question was, did you register any complaint with the plaintiff? about the additional people living in being very careful that you tell me the truth because I know that you think you may know where I'm going, but you don't. Did you make any complaint to her November, December, January, February, March, April, or May? The answer is either yes or no about the other people okay. living in the house. No. So I guess I'm going to start with you because an incident occurred that resulted in her being evicted, that you're serving her with a notice of eviction. Right. Tell me when that took place, because I have to know what your reason was. That's a fair statement. Yes. Right. Okay. So in June 22, like I said, that morning I had served What on that morning? Week, June 21st or something, I believe. What kind of letter were you serving on her? Um, I just gave them, mine is, uh, it's just a complaint notice, you know, saying that. Do you have a copy of that? I may. Do you know what she's talking about? Yes, I have a copy. I'd like to see it. There you go. Okay. Well, this is a letter that says you and your company were eating and drinking in the pool area. Even after I told them to stop, that it wasn't allowed, they did not stop. And there is absolutely no eating or drinking in the pool area. Okay? So that's the letter she served to you. And that was on June 21st. That's the letter she now, served. Now, who at. was eating? Who was eating and drinking in the pool? That would be my sister. That wasn't just your sister. No, it was her and her. No, friend. no, just a second. Let's get it together. So your sister, who wasn't supposed to be there, but they sort of let that skate. Oh, well, who wasn't okay. supposed to be there? Okay. Okay. So your sister and who else? That would be my sister, um, her boyfriend, and two of her friends, or three of her friends, I think. Had they ever been to the pool before? My sister has, but not her friends. So the person who wasn't supposed to be living with you, that's your sister, Yes. invited her boyfriend and three other friends to the pool. She called and asked if it was okay first. She asked you? Yes. And you said fine? Yes. You didn't call the manager? No. Okay. And you are aware that there's no eating and drinking in the pool. That's not what it says on my lease. Is that what it says at the pool? Nope. Does it say anywhere in the house rules? Nope. Nope, it's not an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer no. is no. No, ma'am, it is not. No. Now, when you've been living there for a long time. Do you use the pool? Yes, I do. Ever had any trouble in the time from November of yep. last year? Ever had any complaint? Nope. Nope no, is not sorry, an answer. Sorry, sorry, no sorry. is the answer. No, yeah. no complaint. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. And did you discuss with your sister and her friends that there were any rules that she had to abide by? No, I did not because I was not home yet. Stand up. First name is? Aaliyah. You were their boyfriend and three girlfriends. Any children? No. You know this lady? Yes. What happened when she came to tell you that there was no eating or drinking at the pool? So we were standing... Just, just what happened when she told she you? She came screaming at us, telling us that we needed to get the food out and that we needed to go. Get the food out? What kind of food had you brought in? It was just in? pizza and, like, a soda and water. So, you, so it wasn't a piece of fruit. You were having a meal there, pizza yes. Yes. and food. Had you ever seen your sister bring food into the pool area? Snacks, yeah. Yeah. She said, I'm not talking about snacks. Did she ever bring food into the pool area? No. What prompted you to order food into the pool area? It was a hot day and we were hungry and I'm not sure. You asked your sister if it was okay if you and your friends came. Yes. Since you never saw anybody, because usually there are signs posted yes. around a pool. I've lived in enough places to know. In the Pool signs usually say no jumping in the pool, no food or drink around the pool, right? Yes. Most pools say that. Yes. Did this pool say that? It just said, like you said, no jumping in the pool, no diving um, to come into the pool, but never said nothing about food, drinks, nothing like that. Really? Yes. Okay. So now you please establish to me, Ms. Shaw, that there was notice that there was no food and drink at the pool. At their pool addendum? May I see? And then also no guest addendum. Just a second. It's all part of their... Hold on. 
You're Melissa Duran. Yes, I am. And that's your signature. Yes. Yes. The pool is reserved exclusively for the use of residents of the building. That's what it says. Okay. That's what you signed. No diving in the pool area, no intoxicated persons. Okay. I just want you to show me here, first of all, the only thing that they are violating is that pool is reserved exclusively for the residents of the building. That's in here, but I don't see anything about food. The new pool addendum wasn't part of their contract. So when we put out the new one, it was it was for more updated tenants, but we we didn't sweep them on the Hers food. We served them on the guests. Is what you're saying to me, the only thing that she signed is this, and there is no sign around the pool that says no eating or drinking. There is a sign by the do you have a copy I of it? I don't have a copy of it. Former property manager Tracy Shaw owes for a wrongful eviction and an assault. Okay, go ahead. Because she had moved in prior to them changing the pool addendum, I posted the new pool addendum on all of the doors. And I have actually text messages of Melissa asking me, can we, you know, the no floaties? And I said, well, of course, May I? you know, for oh. children and whatnot, but not big floaties. Okay. So she was acknowledging May the pool addendum that I had. That I'll see. Now, she's going to show me your text messages to her. Yes. So you received the revised pool rules. Yes. And did the new pool rules say anything about guests? No, it did not. So if it said nothing about guests, you originally said that the pool is specifically reserved for residents of the complex. Yes. And according to you, the new pool rules, do they talk about having floaties in the pool? Yes, it did. Did it talk about having guests at the pool? Yeah, yeah actually it did. And what did it say? It, there was no problem, just like on the, on the original lease. It no, was no, no, no. Fine to have guests in the pool. No, that, that's if not you, what this says. This says that the pool is reserved for residents of the building only. Well, we were already told before that it was fine to have guests. This is the contract that you signed. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. So this is the first one that you signed, this one. Mm -hmm. And absent anything else, this says no guests at the pool. This says residents only. Okay. You say that it was the new rules allow you to have guests, or were they silent? There was nothing on there saying that you cannot have guests. It was okay. mainly just saying that you cannot have floaties, you cannot jump or run into the pool. Well, so, just a second. Did it say anything about food? No. Is there a new sign posted around the pool that talks about food? No, it doesn't. All not. I want to see is, Miss Shaw, right. something in the new rules that talks about food. And I'm getting very bored with this. Now, when Ms. Shaw came over and told you you couldn't have food, you had to get rid of the food, yeah. about what time was that? Probably like five, six, I'm not exactly too sure. And when had this food and stuff arrived? Was it? It was, we brought it. We were coming in with the food. We walked in with the food. She, I'm pretty sure Just she's a seen second. Us. So you and your group, five people, walked yeah. in with dinner yeah. to the pool area. And did the dinner include any alcoholic beverages no. like beer? No. What kind of drinks were there? It was Pepsi with soda. And what happened when Miss Shaw came over and told you you weren't allowed to have the food at the pool? She came very aggressively. She, okay, she came aggressively and she, she said you're not allowed. She stormed out and screamed, get, out, get the food out and you guys need to leave. And so what did you do? I told her, okay, I'd get the food out and I made a call to my sister to come help me with the food. And as we were packing... Where was your sister? She was upstairs. So when you came out with the food, you came out of the apartment. No, we had just gotten there. We had... We were coming from another pool area that wasn't open. What other open. pool area? My boyfriend's friend. We were going to swim at his pool, but it wasn't available because there was too many people there. Were you at your boyfriend's house during the day? Uh, no, I was at school and they were all at work. So we all just like met up after everything. Okay, so you were asked by Miss Short to get the food out and then you called your sister. Yes, and I told and her. And then what happened? And I told her if she could come get the food while we swam or if well, not, that we well, were going to leave. Why didn't you just get out? Well, because I was trying to help, because we were splitting like the check through with the money, so we're like splitting the pizza, who's getting what, and all of that. And before we even could leave, she stormed out again, screaming, saying, you guys are getting a notice, you guys are getting a notice, and running up the stairs to her, because she was coming out, and she was like, you know, like, hey, like, what's going on? And then she's like, you guys are getting a notice. I'm tired of everybody like not listening and coming to me with your problems. And then she, my sister was like, whoa, like, you know, like, hey, like, relax. I'm coming to get the food. And then she threw the paper and my sister backed up like, you know. Okay. She, like, so what, so the letter, 
She yes. gave your sister the letter. It was a notice. She gave you the paper that said, this is a complaint. There are people in the pool who are eating, drinking. They don't belong here. They're not whatever she said. Here's your notice. Yes. OK. And that was on the 21st of June. Then yes. what happened? Well, after she threw the paper at me, um, she turned back around, still yelling, and she stomped down the stairs. And I'm trying to tell her, you didn't give me time to come and get the food. And, and, and she slammed, she ran back in her apartment, slammed her door. And she went back to her apartment, and you went where? Back into my house. OK, you went back into your house. And yes. what did you do when you went when back I into your house? When I got back there, I texted her, telling her that I was sorry that they had food in the pool, and I did not know that, because I did not know at the time. Just a second. So, Ms. Duran, so that, let's cut to the chase, so that you knew they weren't supposed to have food in the pool. Only snacks. Yeah, but I didn't know they bring it. I, the just a second. That's not what I asked okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. You knew that there was no food in the pool, only water and snacks. Okay, yes. So you knew that. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, if you know that and you have given, I'm just telling you what the law is. Mm -hmm. If you know that, that there is a rule and you don't convey that, that's your problem. Okay? Okay. All right, so that's June 21st, when guests that you agreed to have in the pool, you didn't know that there was food there. You knew that there wasn't supposed to be food there. That knowledge is imparted to your guests. That's a legal assumption. I want to know what happened after June 21st. When were you served with a three-day notice to quit? I believe it was on the 24th. I'd like to see it. Okay. I have three of the same. They sent me three of them. I uh, just have to see one. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, by a cash app, return any of the money? OK, well, you served this three-day notice to quit, Ms. Shaw. And in it, you were alleging threatens to commit a crime. So I assume that the person, it talks about a statement, threatens to commit a crime. I assume that the threat was directed to you. Yes. In any event, you were given a three-day notice to quit, but actually you managed to get that extended to 30 days. Yes. And one of the things that you had to do was to hire an attorney. Yes. And when you hired an attorney, did you hire an attorney and pay a retainer? Oh, yes, I did. OK. I'd like to see proof of what you paid the attorney. I don't think I'd bring the one that pertained to the lawyer. What I do have is him finding out what the criminal act was. No. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. Landlord has a right to give you a 30-day notice and say, you have to quit the premises. You have no legal right to be there. My only question is, you were not given 30 days notice. You were given a three-day notice. And I'm not actually convinced that there was a basis to give you a three-day notice. The Duran has accused her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, of wrongfully evicting her. Tracy claims Melissa was violating apartment rules. Now, if you got 30 days, and the reason you got 30 days is because you retained an attorney, I'm prepared to look to see how much you paid the attorney, because that's an expense that you have that you wouldn't have had but for the three-day notice to quit. They're entitled to tell you to leave. I mean, yes. you're there with too many people living in the apartment. They've already had a kerfuffle because you allowed your sister and her boyfriend and friends to come to the pool. They were told no food. They ignored them. But I don't think any of that rises to the level of grounds to give you a three-day notice to quit. I think that if they want to tell you that you have to be out in 30 days, that's reasonable. But they didn't. They gave you a three-day notice, forcing you to hire an attorney. I'm prepared to give you the attorney's fees if you prove to me that you paid an attorney. I, I do have proof of that, but I do not have it with me. OK. And how much did you pay him? That's an easy thing for me to verify. Um, I believe it was no. 1200 I want you to think about it carefully. No, it, it was 1200 because he had lowered it. He lowered it from 1400 to 1200 And you paid him by check or cash? I paid him in um, cash app is the only thing, only way I could. Did he go to court with you? We never, we haven't. This is the first court we have been to. So how did he get you 30 days? Because I got the three-day notice and it kept saying I committed a criminal act. Okay, let's. So that was the reason why I obtained the lawyer so he can find out what the criminal act was. And just by phone calls, he got them to extend it to 30 days. So yes. you were never in court, and you left after the 30 days. I left before the 30, I left on August 1st. Okay, and where did you go? I had to move all the way to Atwater, California. Is that where you live now? Yes, it is. And yeah. who lives with you? My husband, 
And um, my young son, that's it, just the three of us, we moved into a smaller, more expensive place. Okay, and you left your sisters? And my mother. And your mother. They are some more completely different. Okay, what do you... This is in their lease about um, disturbances and threats. Listen, I've already made a determination that the three-day notice should have been a 30-day notice to leave. I don't think that anything that I've heard today rises to the level of giving people who've been in the apartment as long as they had, especially over pizza, requires a three-day notice. There. So the only question that I'm entertaining on behalf of the plaintiff and the only monetary award that I'm going to contemplate are attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, return any of the money since he never had to go to court for you? No, he did not. Just a second. If I called him well, right now, would he tell me that you paid him yes. $1,200? Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Though what I was going to tell you is that I did not have enough to pay him completely. I still owe him $250. So you didn't pay him. So you paid him $950. Okay. I, okay. I'm sorry. What do you mean, okay? I didn't, no, I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't. You, so you paid him $950? Yes. I'm awarding you $950, which are your attorney's fees, for the reason that for, I'm speaking, for the reasons that I've stated, because they have an absolute right to give you a 30-day notice tell you to leave. And there was a basis for it, actually. And you know, there was a basis for saying your guests, which is you, are not abiding by the rules. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Right now, we do not intend to keep you as a tenant. We're giving you 30 days notice to find another place. I think that would have been absolutely a problem speaking. Would have been absolutely appropriate. I think a three-day notice to quit was inappropriate given the level of infraction. So I'm awarding you the council fees because that's what it took to get you your 30 days. This case is over. Thank you very much. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2064, Singleton versus Free. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Singleton, your case is relatively simple. It is your claim that the defendant's unleashed dog bit your dog. Yes, ma'am. And you incurred vet bills, and you want Mr. Free to be responsible for them. That's correct. Mr. Free says that it's true that his dog did bite yours on, I think, on the leg. Yes, ma'am. But that... Your dog was on his property, and your dog was the aggressor. That's your position. Correct. Okay. And you were walking two dogs. Two dogs and my nephew. Nephew was a baby. Yes, he was three years old, and my dog was three. And the large dog that was bit, he was 12 at the time. So you have a small rat terrier, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. And your larger dog is what kind of dog? A Siberian Husky. And what kind of dog do you have, sir? I have a Italian Mastiff, Cane Corso. That's a big dog. At the time, he was about... Um, maybe 12 months old, so maybe a little bit over a year. So he's bigger now, but yeah. How much did he weigh? At that time, probably about 80 pounds. Tell me about your property, sir. You well, have a photograph stayed... of your property? I do, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay. Here's a couple of them here. Miss Singleton, this incident happened when? Christmas day of last year, around 1230, right before we had Christmas lunch. Weather was okay? Oh, it was great. And how close do you live to Mr. Free? I don't live anywhere near him. I actually live in Stone Mountain, but I was going to my parents' house for Christmas, so we were walking around the neighborhood. He lives almost directly behind my parents' house. And I see that while there are driveways here, the front lawn extends all the way to the street. Is that right? Yes. And you were walking both your dogs, and were they leashed or unleashed? They were leashed. Both? Um, yes, they were both leashed. And Mr. Free, you sort of acknowledged that both of her dogs were on leashes. I, I've only seen one dog. I didn't see two dogs, and I didn't see a child either. It was her okay. and a dog. So. The dog that you saw, what kind of dog was that? It looked like an, a husky, kind of like a wolf. So I'm not sure. So just a second. So you saw a husky? Correct. Did you see the plaintiff? Yes. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Okay. Was the husky on a leash? I get yes, I guess. The, the, the answer is either yes or no. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I wasn't, okay, well, I wasn't if you're not sure, leash. she says the husky was on a leash. Yeah, so I'm not going to deny her dog was Okay. Mm -hmm. And your dog at the time was on your property unleashed. My dog was on my property, period. Your dog, pay careful attention. Your dog was on your property Correct. unleashed. Correct. At 1230 on Christmas Day, what were you doing? I was uh, putting up a basketball goal that I had just bought for my children. Christmas in the front yard with my dog next to me. Okay. What I want you to do uh -huh. is 
Is this a picture of your house? That's a picture of my house from the other side of the street. Right. That's fine. This is a picture yes. of your house. Yes, it is. The answer is yes. Kevin, what I'd like you to do is take this photograph to Mr. Free. I want him to take a Sharpie. Do we have a Sharpie or something? Okay. A pen. You have a pen? Yes, ma'am. And tell him to make a circle where he was and an X where he saw, for the first time, Miss Singleton and her dog. X, where you were, just okay. where you were, Big you personally. Okay. And put a circle, the place where you saw Miss Singleton for the first time. Okay. So you were in the front yard. Correct. And that looks about 30 feet away from where you saw Miss Singleton for the first time. If that. From here to here. Uh, I'd say about 20 feet. You know. It's not as big as it looks on that picture. It's a pretty small yard. I would say it's about 30 feet from where you put the X. It's side. all the way past the house. You're at the one side of the driveway. You have an entranceway to your house. Correct. And then you have, is this front a living room? Yes, it is. A living room which is past that, and where you made a circle, which is a very large circle, is probably 10 feet away from the edge of the house. Yes, that's where I know. So I said yeah. it's about 30 feet away. Okay. And now I want you to put, can I have your pink Sharpie, please? Yes. Thank you very much. I want you to use this and put in this picture where your dog was at 12.30. To get your understanding, you want- 12.30. I want you to put a mark where your dog was immediately before you saw Miss Singleton and her dog. Before, thank you. You're not going to be able to see. Okay, great. Great. So your dog, according to you, was right next to you about 30 feet away from where Miss Singleton was when you saw her. To be honest with, with you, dog. he kind of moves around the yard. He doesn't sit still very much, so. Well, you understand, Mr. Free, mm -hmm. that even if your dog is on your property, you're supposed to maintain control of your dog all the time. And, and which I You do. understand that? Yes, I do. You understand that? Yeah. So if your dog is able to run 30 feet without he, being connected he, to you. He didn't run. Just pay, walk, cha-cha, yeah. tap dance, uh -huh. pirouetted. However he got there, your dog got 30 feet away from where you were. Correct. Your 80-pound dog. Jen claims dog owner Kevin Free owes for vet bills from a dog fight. Now, Miss Singleton was walking with her other dog and a three-year-old. I want you to process that into your mind. And this is a 12-month-old, which is still a puppy. You know, still a puppy, but at 80 pounds... Your, your Honor, there was no three-year-old. I, I didn't see in a three-year-old. Just, just a second. Okay. I don't care what you saw while you were busy putting together something for Christmas in your front yard. Mm -hmm. If you didn't see it, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. If you didn't see it, it just means you didn't see it. She tells me she sees it. She remembers walking her two dogs. You only remember one. She has two that she was walking at 12.30 Christmas Day. The fact that you only saw one means you weren't paying attention to where your dog was. Or they weren't there. Well, that's pretty stupid, Mr. Free. I mean, it doesn't make that's sense pretty, to, that's to carry pretty, two dogs Mr. and Free, an infant Mr. down Free, a neighborhood you don't Mr. even Free, belong in. I mean, Mr. you don't Free, from? Mr. Free, they're only going to take one voice. I understand. Yeah. They're only going to take one voice, and that's mine. Let me tell you why your argument is stupid. Because it doesn't make any difference whether she was walking two dogs or four dogs or eight dogs. It doesn't make any difference whether she was walking with or without a three-year-old. Ultimately, her case comes down to she was walking her leashed dog. I haven't figured out whose fault it is yet. She was walking her leashed dog, and your dog ran, walked, pirouetted, cha cha whatever it did, to her dog out of your control, was not under your control because it was not leashed. Do you understand? I understand. Now, I can take away everything else. Not that I'm going to because I believe that you were distracted. You didn't see it. And I believed her that she was walking with her three-year-old nephew. Yes, ma'am. Nephew and another dog that you didn't see. 
But that's not the issue in this case, whether she was with another dog, another child, or with anybody else. The issue is, whose fault is it that a dog was out of control? So, now you're going to tell me what happened at 1230 on Christmas Day, just so that Mr. Free doesn't think that I'm picking on him. <laughs> okay. Which I'm not. Okay, I know. You may think I am, but I'm not picking on him. You're walking with your husky. Yes, ma'am. On a leash. Yes, ma'am. What happened? I was walking with my nephew, no, three years old. No, no, just listen to me. Okay. Listen to me carefully. Okay, just walk down the street. I okay. said you're walking. I, I got it in my mind. Okay. But so Mr. Free doesn't think that I'm being unfair to him because mm -hmm. he doesn't remember mm -hmm. what he saw. You're walking your husky. Okay, only him. On the street. Mm -hmm. So your nephew didn't get hurt. That's your correct. rat terrier didn't get hurt. That's correct. Okay. So now you're walking your husky on the street. And? Okay, and then all of a sudden we see a dog charging towards us. And Who's we? Oh, I called me, my nephew, and my dog's we. No, no, it's just I saw. I saw. <laughs> I saw a dog charging towards us. That dog and Leon got into an altercation, and then Leon turned around to try and kick the dog in the face, and he grabbed his foot, and he let go. Okay, but then, let's, let's, let's go much slower. Okay, yes, ma'am. You saw a Le dog charging towards, towards you. you. Yes, ma'am. And? And... That dog got into an altercation with, with my your dog. With your dog. Tell me about that initial altercation. At first, they were biting each other's muzzles. Then... Okay, so they were both biting each other's muzzles. Yes. Okay. My dog turned around to try and, I guess, either... No, don't tell me what he was trying to do. Your dog turned around. He turned... kicked the dog in the face. Your dog kicked his in dog in the face. Yes, he grabbed his leg, punctured it, let it go. Leon kicked him again. This time he grabbed his other leg. Okay, so your dog kicked that dog again. Twice, kicked yes. His dog again. Yes, ma'am. And? That dog that time grabbed his leg, had a good hold, and shook it immediately. And then that's when I knew his leg was broken. No, 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 no. don't show me pictures. Okay. First I have to find whose fault it is before okay. I look at pictures and vet bills. Okay. Okay, now, when you saw his dog charging towards mm -hmm. you, and your dog's name is Leon? Yes, ma'am. On a leash? Yes, ma'am. On a leash. But it's a big dog. Yes, ma'am. How much does it weigh? Leon, 75 pounds. So about the same as the defendant's dog? Yes. And it's a senior dog? Yes, that is correct. Has your dog ever had a history with another dog? I'm going to say it again. Has your dog ever had a history of an altercation with another dog? No, ma'am. Has your dog ever had a history of an altercation with another person? No, ma'am. And I assume if I asked you those questions, you would give me what answer, sir? I would say no. You would say no because? Because my dog has never had any problems with any dogs. With any dog? Any dog's person. Any other person? Correct. So you would acknowledge, Miss Singleton, that I'm going to show you this photograph of Mr. Free's house. And what I'd like you to do is show me where, according to you, Let's get her a different color pen. Do we have a different, well, we have, that's This is blue. Okay. I'd like you to make a P, to just put a P, okay. where the dogs first made contact. Okay. Okay. It's not on this photo. Is it on this photo? Do you have a photo? I do have a photo. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Would oh, you these, please yeah, make This a, is his home, and this is where it happened, right underneath the tree. Put a P there. Oh, so what you're saying is, where you put the pee, that the dog was in the street. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Were you in the street? I sure was. I would like you to put a D in this picture mm -hmm. where you say, did you see Mr. Free? I did not, not until he came and retrieved his animal. Did you see where he came from? No, ma'am, I did not. Did you see anything being assembled in, in the yard? Once we were leaving, yes. And what did you see? A basketball goal. A basketball goal? Yes, ma'am. And is that what you were putting together, Mr. Free? Yes, ma'am. Would you show me where that was, please? Okay. Uh -huh. It was here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now... Mr. Free, you're putting something together. The first thing you hear is a kerfuffle, some sort of a... No. What do you hear? Claims dog owner Kevin Free. 
is responsible for injuries after his dog attacked her dog. No, I actually I saw my dog run across the yard. So And you and saw the dog running when across I, the well, yard. Well, normally, normally I really don't yeah, have let, a problem with that. Let me explain him. something to you. Yeah. Okay. My job that I'm really good at okay. is telling when people are peeing on my leg and trying to tell me it's raining. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, I could tell immediately from your body language that you were beginning to tell me a whole bunch of who shot John. So I suggest to you, Mr. Free, that if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. Now, I right. want to explain to you why that's so important. Did you hear Miss Singleton? Miss Singleton actually said that her dog nipped yours in the face. Correct. She said that. Correct. She didn't have to tell me that. Okay. She said her dog not only nipped your dog in the face because they were fighting muzzle to muzzle, but afterwards kicked your dog twice. Do you understand? That's I, what she said. I heard that, yeah. That's what she said about that. Mm -hmm. That's sort of, uh-huh. That, that's sort of surprising. That would seem to someone. It surprises me I that dogs can what? get up on their front legs and kick, too. So I, I don't know what she's saying to you, but I don't know. I, I didn't see any listen, kicking. Listen to The, the fight <clears throat> lasted like three seconds. It wasn't. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you understand when you're not telling the truth, Mr. Free? Well, I think what you important, read from me is me responding to a whole bunch no, of stuff that was no, said that didn't No, happen. what me so, responding okay. to you is okay. your body English. Okay. That's me responding to you because you were putting together this thing, mm -hmm. but you said it was here. Correct. It was in the driveway. It's pretty big. I well, this isn't a driveway, sir. That's, That's grass. That's what you marked where you were. I'm and you marked where your dog was in the grass. Me where I and it, was. Just a second. Not the basketball goal. No, I asked you where you were. Yes, and you and said here. And then you said, just said to me, please read it back. Where were you? And you said, I believe he said he was in the driveway. Correct. It was in the driveway. I right. apologize. Excuse me. Just a second. Driveway. Okay. Do you understand? I do. Eventually, it noodles its way out, sir. The same way it noodles its way out to, my memory is correct, in your answer you wrote down, you saw them for the first time in the street. On the, what we call a curve. It's a small slope that comes up from no. Not all the way in the street, no. No, here, you see what happens, Mr. Free? Yeah. What you just said to me belies credulity. Well, I'm trying to that, be as Just a second, but not Excuse because, me. you know, I've lived on this planet mm -hmm. almost 80 years. Mm -hmm. And if I have a choice between walking in the street and walking in that little dip little that's curve. designed to take rainwater away, I don't walk in that thing because I'll get killed. I'll break my legs. And you certainly don't walk in this little thing if you're walking two dogs and a child. You don't walk in that little drain that's carved out here to take rainwater away. You walk either on the grass, on everybody's grass, Correct. or you walk in the street. And you, sir, would have me believe that the plaintiff walked all the way around the block, walking on people's grass. Other than that, she would have to be in the street and decide, well, Sometimes I think I'm going to go up on no. the grass in uh, this guy's no, I house. Say that. <laughs> what? Sometimes it's unavoidable, so I'm not saying that at all. Sir, I have to tell you something. Yeah. You're going to pay her vet bills. Your dog was out of your control and was in the street, not on your grass. In the street. You had no control over your dog, an 80-pound puppy. <laughs> now, the dog could have just playfully knocked over the three-year-old and hurt the three-year-old. Could have. Didn't. Got into a scuffle with a dog approximately the same size. Her dog was leashed within her control. Your dog, you had to run from where you were putting this together and come and get your dog. Your Honor, that's the, what you that's what you say. A dog under control doesn't manage to do two jump kicks and a, a, and a bite. Kick, no, just a second, sir. You can do that <clears throat> if you're on a leash. Her dog never left her hand. Your Honor, your, the injuries no, was to the this hind isn't, feet this of isn't, the dog. This isn't, I mean, Mr. Free, this is, okay. you, maybe your wife lets you get away with that, sir. I don't. This is not a tap dance. This is not a recital or a rehearsal. You made a picture of where you said this happened. Yeah. I don't believe you. That's what it's about. I believe that this occurred on a public street, and on the public street, you had no control of your dog. You decided to let your dog stay outside. You haven't had any trouble with your dog before, so you wouldn't have anticipated that your dog would run out into the street, because if your dog ran out into the street, 
and a car hit it and killed it, whose fault would that be? That would definitely be mine. That would definitely be yours, yeah. right? Do you think that you might sue the person who hit your dog? You might we'll try. Say, you might try. You might say, oh, my God, they should have been going slower. Oh, my God. They... Do you understand? You're the owner. Dogs are animals. They're not as smart as you are. But when your dog charged out into the street, it could just as easily have gotten hit by a car. That would have been your fault. But under those circumstances, you would have said it's the car's fault. Your dog was out in a public street outside of your control, and it's a big dog, and you should be more careful. If you want to keep your dog outside while you're putting something together and keep the dog on your property, put down a stake, put the dog on a lead, and let the dog stay outside with you. But if you let a 12-month-old, 80-pound dog run loose and it runs into the street, you, sir, are responsible for the consequences. What was your vet bill? It was $1,832.64. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. And is Mr. Ve the emotional distress. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2156, Hickendorf versus Zerozosa. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Hickendorf, who is this gentleman? This was an attorney I hired in Mexico, kind of in the middle of the night when... He's an attorney? In Mexico. Okay. And my witness. Okay. So, trying to piece this complaint and answer together. You purchased a home from Mr. Zerosa? No, Your Honor. He purchased a home from you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. He purchased a home from you in Mexico? Yes. Where in Mexico? About five miles north of Rosarito, maybe 10 miles south of the border. How long have you owned the home? I owned the home about five years. How much did you pay for it? When I bought it, it was 180. How much did Mr. Zarzosa pay for the house? 245. On what date did he purchase the house? February the 9th. Were you present at the closing of the house? I was. When you closed on the house on February 9th, how much money did you receive? I was supposed to receive... No, no, no. You were supposed to receive $245,000. How much did you receive? I received a cashier's check for $15,000. 15? 15000 I received cash, 4500 and I received the next day through a, a wire transfer 4.6 million pesos or something like that. I have the paperwork. Just tell me what that translated to in dollars. It was $220,500. Okay. Well, if you have proof to how much the translation of pesos to dollars is, that means that you got a total so far without the down payment. Did he give you a down payment? Yes, 5000 I was paid for my house. Hmm? I, have, I was paid for my house. No, I understand that, but this is the problem. Mm. Mr. Zarzosa says that when he took out the mortgage, he increased the amount that he was borrowing so that he had closing costs covered to the extent of, I think, $3,800 or $3,900? It, it was a total of almost $10,000. No, 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 no. Oh, $3,900. That's what I asked you. What's, what's $10,000? $10,000 comes out of nowhere. It was a difference, you said, of $3,900. Yes, ma'am. And so he wanted from you the difference. Well, the realtor gave me... Not the realtor. He wanted from you... The realtor told me that. I've never really spoke to Dante, except for on February 22nd and the time that he came and looked at my house. But the realtor sent me a fake statement, which I looked at, because it's a high school kid's piece of paper, and no. I said I was not making a refund. Okay, well, you have to make a refund if you were paid more for the house than you're bargained for with the purchaser. That's true. That's true. And the bank told me on April No, no, 1st, they can't tell you anything. Oh, really? If they documented something to you, then I'll read it. But you can't tell me what a bank told you. First of all, banks don't speak. Now, I'd like you to get what Mr. Zarzosa is handing me. This is from the bank. Well, I can't read this, but what I can't read is in Spanish, but I can read the numbers which indicate that you received, Ms. Heckendorf, a total of $249,544.22. Let me see. May I see that, ma'am? Absolutely. Because this is what that bank gave me right here. 
and I did go with my witness to the bank on April 1st, and they told me that you that can't, was... The bank can't tell you anything. They told me that was the they correct can't, amount. A bank can't tell you. They can give you a document, which I will read, but a bank can't right. tell you anything. This is not really a case about this contract. Yeah, it is. It started this way. They're saying that that bank sent me the wrong amount of money? Yes. That's oh. what it says. That's what that says. That's what this says. That's what that says. I imagine anyone can write what they want, but I was not paid the wrong amount of money. Well, the bottom line of it was, eventually, you gave him back $2,800 of the 39 that he said that he was entitled to. Is that correct? No. Ms. Heckendorf? No. You never gave him $2,800? I signed a contract and gave him $2,800 under duress. He took my dogs and my cat and he took I, my property. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. When mm -hmm. I ask you a question, I expect an answer. Mm -hmm. You gave him $2,800, and you gave him the $2,800 because he believed and told you that he had taken out extra money in order to cover his closing costs. And you got that money, and he wanted that money back because he was going to have to pay for it through his mortgage. I have never heard that these were closing costs. This is the first I've heard about closing well, costs. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I I'm going to stop, never heard about stop closing talk, costs. Stop talking. Mm -hmm. Stop talking. Okay. And I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free. Karen Heckendorf claims her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, extorted money by keeping her pets in property. Dante is countersuing for false accusations and lost wages. Good. This is your piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. Your piece of evidence says that you got $249,544.22. No. That's what it says. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's what it says. You gave him $2,800. He wanted $3,900. You gave him $2,800. What you're suing him for is... He also is, wanted $2,500. I'm going to dismiss your case. Okay. It's just as easy for me to send you back to Mexico. Once you closed on this house, according to what I looked at, Ms. Heckendorf, you asked if you could stay in the house because your new house wasn't ready to close escrow. Is that correct? That's a yes or a no? Yes. And so you closed the house on February 9th, and he allowed you to stay in the house. When were you supposed to vacate the house? March the 1st. I paid Just, uh, that That's a date. March 1st. Mm -hmm. And between February 9th and March 1st, how much did you pay him in rent? I gave That's, him the money from the casita. Just a second. Yes. That's an amount between February 9th and March 1st. 2,370. So that was a month's rent. Is that what you received? No, Your Honor. How much did she pay you in rent between February 9th and when she was supposed to vacate March 1st? She no. would have paid you rent Nothing. in advance. Nothing. Show me proof that you paid him anything for rent on February 9th. Did you ever receive from this agent $2,370? No, Your Honor. Well, do you know who he is? Yes, I do know. That's the realtor that uh, represented both of us on the purchase. And you never received this was on February 9th. He acknowledges he signed that he received $1,620 as in for the last month's rent and $750 security deposit as well as prorated rent of $120. I don't know what prorated rent is for. It was for um, the end of January. They moved in a few days before. Who moved in? The people that rented the casita. And that's part of the house? Yes. What is that? I have two houses on the property, the one I lived in and the casita. And Dante gave me a email that if I gave him this money from the casita, that I could live in the front house until March the 1st. I have that Just email. a second. When he bought the house, mm -hmm. did he or did he not buy the casita as well? Yes, he did. A, so he bought the casita as well. So it belonged to him. This rent belonged to him. Only so what I do you mean? It. He's not giving you anything. If he buys a house and there's another property, 
he owns that property. He owns whatever rent was due for that property. So what you're saying is, let me cut to the chase. What you're saying is, you claim, he said to you, I've just paid you a quarter of a million dollars for your house, which includes the casita. Your house isn't ready yet to close escrow. I will let you stay in the house free if you let me keep the money from the casita's rent. Yes. Oh, and fine. I have an so email. that the bottom line, don't, don't speak, it doesn't look like you're losing and so far. I may not be finished with you. And so I had I, you're the casita. speaking, you're trying to speak over me. Well, and I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free from February 9th or 10th until it was supposed to be until March 1st. That was your understanding. You were staying in his house for free. I didn't have to rent the casita. I don't care whether you had to or whether you didn't have to. You were staying in your house that you sold to him for free until your new house was ready. That's a yes. I felt that. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. Okay. You sold him your property and mm -hmm. you took advantage of a piece of that property, the casita, in order to negotiate yourself a free three week rent until your house is ready. Now, you may stand there and look at me in that smug way, but you and I both know that that was a deal you made for yourself. Yes, I agreed, okay. I agreed to rent the casita ahead of time before I moved out and give him the money so that I could stay in the property until my house closed as well one week. Pretty, pretty tricky. May have been March pretty, the 6th. Pretty tricky. Bottom line is you stayed in his house for free. Okay. And then... What the rest of the case is about is that you claim that he changed the locks on the door before March 1st, and in the house you had your pets, and he held ransom your pets until you gave him what turned out to be $2,800. That's your complaint. He changed the locks on February 28th. Where 22nd. were you when he changed the locks? February 22nd. 22. Where were you when he changed the locks? I was lock? in my office in San Diego. Okay. And how did you find out that the locks were changed on the door? Dante um, sent me an email that I found later admitting to what he did. But no, I, don't. I asked you a question. I was at well, my just, office, I, and he called me on the phone, okay. and he said, this is Dante's Ardosa. Just, 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 and I had... My to, way. Mm-hmm. He called you in the office. Mm -hmm. That's how you found out he changed the locks. Yes. That's an answer. Mm -hmm. Approximately what time did he call you in your office? It was about 6.30, 6.45 in the evening. 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you claim. He said to you and what you said to him. This is Dante Zerzosa. I have your two dogs. You're never going to see them again if you don't pay me $3,900. Now, that wasn't the first time you had heard about this $3,900. That was I'd not the first time. I heard about it I'd on February the 9th. No, the right. 8th. Sorry, February the 8th, I'd heard about it. And so you told him after that that you would, or you told him or you told your lawyer, is that you? Yeah, now me. you can stand up. Sure. I met him. Shh, don't speak. Okay. On what date did you get your pets back? Well, I didn't actually get them. My friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. And they gave them don't, to, don't, and they gave them to my friends. Stop, no, please. Okay. Sit. No. Karen Heckendorf has accused her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, of extortion by threatening her pets. Dante claims Karen owes him for making false accusations. Your last name, sir, is? Mena, Your Honor. Mena. Uh, Mr. Mena, you're an attorney in Mexico? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you a real estate attorney? Yes, civil attorney, real estate as well. You understand what this is about, and you understand if you're a real estate attorney, that sometimes people take a mortgage that's beyond what they need in order to cover their closing costs. You understand that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's not an unusual thing. I bought and sold many homes. A lot of people do that. And when were you first made aware of the fact that the defendant was at least claiming that there was an amount that he had incurred debt on by way of a mortgage in excess of what your client in Mexico was supposed to receive in the amount of $3,900? February the 22nd, something like that. 
222. And when she came to your office, now we no longer have attorney-client privilege, sir, because she's brought you here as a witness, so you're going to testify si. to every conversation that you Absolutely, have. Yes. You understand that? Absolutely. Okay. She came to your office after she found out that the locks were changed. Actually, I was at home. That was at night. So when, for the first time, sir, did you hear about this money that the defendant was claiming that he was owed? Uh, Mr. Dante, um, uh, call me. I want you to answer my question. Yeah, yes, I'm... My question is, when she called you the night of the 22nd at your home, did she tell you at that time or soon thereafter that there was a discrepancy that he was alleging with regard to the closing fees? Not actually, no. No, she didn't tell no. you anything. She told you that he just illegally evicted her and changed the locks. Yes, and at the same time, because of the some situations regarding a deal she has on the sale of the property. Your client knew, as of February 8th, that the defendant was alleging that she owed him money from the closing costs. That's clear. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. Now, they had had clearly ongoing discussions about this mm -hmm. from February 8th or 9th when the deal closed and she got her money and she's living rent free. So what I want to know, when did she share with you, not that there was an illegal eviction, not that her pets were in the house, when did she share with you that he was claiming that she owed him money? And I'm not excusing self-help. When did she tell you that? Because she knew it at the beginning. She knew it before she called you. I have the um, uh, communication from Mrs. Uh, Karen. At the time we filed the complaint in the DA office, this is a district attorney office. This is the time when she uh, expressed me the whole facts. Oh, so she didn't tell you the whole facts when she called you at home on the 22nd? Uh, uh, no, because she was very bored, worried. She was concerned regarding okay, the babies. Don't tell me that. Okay. That's it. Now I got it. So I got what you're dealing with. I understand who I'm dealing with. Okay. On what date did you get your pets back, Miss Heckendorf? The 22nd. Okay. What time? Well, I didn't actually get them. I got them the next day because my friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. They gave them don't, to, don't, and they gave them to don't. my friends. Stop it, please. Sit. Yeah. I just asked you when you got your animals back. So you got your animals back on the same day as he changed the locks on the house. They were given to friends. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So they were returned to you the same day because if they were given to your friends at your direction, your friends were your agents. Yes. Good. Only the dogs. He had my cat the next day. Did you have a cat or was it an outside cat? Is it an outside cat? It's an outside cat that lives indoors, and they, they okay, put the doggy outside. door down so the cat couldn't get out. Okay. He told me he had my cat. cat. Okay. When did you give him the $2,800? About 5 o'clock on Wednesday the 23rd. Is there a writing of the exchange of that money? I'd like to see it. I can't read this. The plaintiff has a translated version. Can I see the translated copy, please? Can I speak? About what? About that paper. Yeah. The, he was the one that drew it up. He could tell you, Your Honor, and... and, and, and no, 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 no. No, no, I want this. Did you draw this up? Can I see it? Yeah, sure. Kevin, give it to him. Thank you. Did you draw that? Y yes, I participated. What does it tell me? It's translated. Uh, don't speak. Do you have the translation of this document? I yes, that? I gave it to you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, number five. Very clear. This is the agreement that Mr. Zarzosa receives from Ms. Heckendorf $2,800 for concept of refund of pending payment. The previous amount is received fully. Therefore, the debt is liquidated. And number six, the seller, Ms. Karen Heckendorf grants the broadest waiver derived from the investigation file presented before the district attorney's office. I assume that that was your complaint mm -hmm. and with a file number filed against Mr. Zarzosa by not keeping any legal action present, past or future, derived from the present business. This is the police report they're talking about. I don't care what this says is you've settled all of your disputes with each other. This says you've settled everything that had to be settled. Okay, but 
what the translation suggests is by this document, each of you understood that you were giving him money. He was not going to follow through with anything that had to do with the criminal complaint or with a criminal complaint against him. You went your own merry way. Am I crazy or is that what this document says, sir? You are the lawyer. Yes, it says so. That's what it says so. So I want to know why you're all here bothering me. You settled everything. You got back your stuff. You got out of your house. You got your personal property. He has a counterclaim for false accusations and loss of wages as a result of whatever. This document says you've resolved everything with each other. So why are you here? I did not sign that document under usual circumstances. I hadn't had any sleep and I was coerced. And he said he was gonna burn my furniture or he was gonna sell it in the year that it would take me to prosecute him under this Mexican uh, contract. Put it down, sir. The case is over. If he wanted to The sue case is me, over. You're a pretty savvy lady, madam. You had an attorney that you consulted. He was there when this document he wasn't was on signed. A I, uh, deal. He was there he when was this, only on goodbye. this deal. Goodbye, we're done. The case is night. dismissed. So is your counterclaim. This court is adjourned. This was really a case about Dante taking my animals for hostage and extortion. I didn't steal anything. The only reason I agreed to give him $2,800 was because he said he was gonna burn or sell my furniture. I'm gonna enjoy my house. Thank you, Karen. That lady was never intimidated into anything. I don't think so either. <laughs> she knew she had gotten an extra few bucks at the closing. She knew that she was really living there rent-free, which is really very nice. You buy a property, mm -hmm. letting her stay there for almost a month. I have little sympathy for him because he resorted to self-help, went to the house, changed even though he knew she was still there, and changed the locks. But that document clearly indicated that both parties at some point said, OK, enough. I'm getting out of the house. I'm getting my belongings. My pets are back. Yep. Here's your money, and finished. Well, when you make a settlement, you've made a settlement. You don't get to make one settlement in Mexico yeah. and another one in California. Agree. That's not the way. He's suing motorist Mikea Bigham for property damage to his house from a car accident. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2157, Davis versus Bigham. Miss Bingham. Yes, ma'am. You hit Mr. Davis's house. This is wall, retaining wall? Wall. Mm. Yes, ma'am. You hit his wall. Yes, ma'am. With your car. Yes, ma'am. It damaged his wall. His wall didn't move. His wall didn't come up on you. And you were at home at the time. No, ma'am, I was actually away. Okay, so you didn't see what happened. I did not visually witness the incident. Okay. Just the damage after. Who did? There were several neighbors. Uh, one of my neighbors called me. You don't, me. just... You have no witnesses here today. I do not have any witnesses with me today. They could not. Do you have a police report? Yes, ma'am, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Thank you. Accident happened on September 22nd. Whose car were you driving? It was my car. My dad bought it for me. When? Uh, last year. Sometime. What kind of car is it? 20, 2012 Nissan Altima. Do you have insurance on the car? I have the... insurance. Did you have insurance, and you're going to tell me with whom, because that you can check, on September 22nd of 2022? Yes, ma'am. You did? Yes, ma'am. With whom? Direct. Okay, let me see that you had insurance. Do you have proof that you had insurance on the car? Well, I have the policy. Were you current on payments for the policy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you had insurance. I'm just wondering why your insurance didn't cover this accident. Oh, I don't know. What time did you hit his wall? On the 22nd? It was around 4.30, 4.45-ish. In the afternoon? Yes, ma'am. Where were you going? I was on the way to pick up my uncle to go to my son's football game. Okay. So, Miss Bingham, tell me what happened. I was getting off the interstate. I turned right. I was coming up to the light. As I was going to the light, I never seen the car. Go over to the chart and tell me, explain it to me. Okay. So, this is 28th. I got off the interstate. This is me driving straight to the light. As I was going straight, just how it happened, a car comes out from over here at Halley Park. It hits me. It caused me to go left, but I was in this lane. I was in this lane. It was going to cause me to go left and hit the cars in these lanes. So I turned right, and I ended up in his yard to avoid a collision. Do you have photographs of the rear damage to your car? Um, it's right here, but you can't see. I guess they cropped out most of it. 
I want to see the damage to the right if I may, driver's side. Is, yes. I have some photos that might be helpful. I'd like to see them. Uh, these are the car, and these are other damages as well. So it appears that someone hit her car mm -hmm. on the driver's rear panel. Yes, ma'am. And took off. Yes, yes, ma'am. Do you own this home, sir? Yes, ma'am, I do. And there's no question that you swerved in and damaged his property. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you try to contact her insurance company? I did. You went home, you were called, came from wherever you were from work, you came home, you took Correct. a look at it. Car was still there when you got home? Uh, no, ma'am, uh, the car was removed. Uh, my neighbor was able to put me on the phone with uh, Makia and the police officer, so I was able to get that information. Immediately, uh, when returning home, I reached out to submit the photos that I had taken myself and submit the police report after obtaining it. It took uh, you know, quite a considerable amount of time to get back with me, but uh, when I reached out again to understand the status, they you know, said that she's not liable and they, they were not gonna stand behind it. Can I see what they sent to you? Did they send something to you? They did send a letter. I'd like to see it. Um, I do not have that letter with me, but I actually called to speak with them. You said they sent you a letter? Yes, ma'am. And where is it? I don't have the letter. It was a, de a denial letter. That said it was not her fault? It did not say it was her fault, but they said they could not uh, submit the claim due to, I guess, the whatever insurance she had, whatever coverage she had, the amount of coverage. Oh, no, that's a different story. You see, that's why I need the letter. Okay. Either they said that they're denying the claim because it wasn't her fault, well, or they denied the claim because she had no insurance to cover the it. The letter also indicated, of course, reaching out to the company to, to speak and, and discuss it further. So when I did reach out to the point of contact on the letter to understand why they weren't covering it, the amount of coverage that she had did not cover, I guess, property damage. And that was an argument between me and the, the company. And well, how much did it cover? They did not How specify. Oh, well, that's they okay. simply denied it and pushed it away and actually hung up on me. So there's no denying the cars there, right? Uh, yes. No denying the accident. No, I do understand you. Do you have homeowner's insurance? I do have homeowner's insurance. Did you put it in through your homeowner's insurance? Consulted homeowner's insurance, and they suggested that I work this out, me personally, instead of taking the hit on my homeowner's insurance as a victim of this accident. So I didn't see that necessary. Well, Mr. Davis, I sort of disagree with you, sir. And usually that's not the position I take, but if I am to believe Miss Bingham, and based upon the evidence that you presented to me, it clearly demonstrates that she was hit. Her vehicle was a victim of a hit and run. Her vehicle was hit, which caused this accident. There is no indication anywhere in the police reports that she was speeding, that she went through a light. Based on her own testimony, she swerved in my direction to avoid hitting other cars. Well, wouldn't that be smart? If her insurance didn't cover it, your homeowners will cover it. My homeowners covers that, and that's a penalty for me, and I'm a victim here. So she is she. crossed over. Just a second. So is she. She can't find the other driver. I mean, it would be different. That's, that's her responsibility. No, sir. And later today. We would like the two kayaks back. Correct. And when did you begin storing them at the defendant's? I brought them over the next day after I bought them. Okay, you acknowledge the fact that the plaintiff, who was then your friend, brought them over for you to store. You're not friends anymore. She wants them back. Why not? Jimmy Davis claims motorist Mikea Bigham owes for damage to his house after Mikea crashed into his yard. That sounds smart. It was she didn't smart. want to hit oncoming traffic coming from the other direction. It was not oncoming so, traffic. She was in the same lane with the traffic. If I am to believe her and your evidence showing that her car was hit in the rear on the driver's side, so I have no reason to doubt her. There was no issue of drugs or alcohol involved. You weren't issued a citation, I assume? No, ma'am. No. Then if her insurance didn't cover it, your homeowners will cover it. Sure. And you should go through your homeowners. My homeowners and covers that, covers that, and that's a penalty for me, and I'm a victim here. So, so is she. crossed over. Just a second. So is she. I understand. If I am to believe her, and I believe her, so is she. I understand. Uh, so but what I the, think you have uh, to do is go through your homeowners, not Miss Bingham. She can't find the other driver. I mean, it would be different. That's, that's her responsibility. No, sir. She is a victim of a hit and run. She has no way 
unless it comes out of her pocket of compensating you. It came she out has of my no pocket, no. She has no way unless it's out of her pocket of compensating you. She has insurance. You have no evidence to give me today as to why her insurance made a decision that they weren't responsible. You don't have that with you today, and it could very well be, as her insurance company determined, that this accident, while tragic, was not her fault. She was, in fact, a victim of a hit and run. You were a byproduct of that. So I'm telling you, go to your homeowners. Well, let me understand correctly here. What, yeah. what I'm telling yeah. you is, use your homeowners. That's what I would do. That's you? I mean, that's a lot of other people would have a different decision. A lot of other people would bring it to small claims court and try to dispute that, and that's what... Well, that's what you're doing, and I'm telling you that you, you should use your homeowner's insurance because that's what it's for. Typically, with car insurance, there's property... Coverage. You don't have... Sir, I'm not accepting your hearsay. You have to prove your case to me. You see, that's your burden. You have to prove your case. I have now made a decision that the accident was not caused by her. She was not... Not acting. caused by she her was not, deciding to swerve into my property. Are you, are you trying to talk over me? Just adding it was, a little extra it content was, to it. It was not caused by substance abuse. It was not caused by speeding. There was no violation given to her. And according to you, she had insurance. So it's up to you to show me why... Her insurance Her insurance... Policy. No, not her policy. Why you were told her insurance didn't cover it. You don't have that here. In the event that you give me a letter and the letter said she has liability for a certain amount, but it's not the $5,000 that you're alleging that it will cost to redo this. She only had $2,500. Well, then I would say to you, her insurance should kick in the $2,500 and I'm going to give you the other $2,500. You shouldn't be out of pocket. Yeah. I would do that. If, that she, so if she determines to underinsure her liability, so that she pays less in insurance, then that's on her. Then the insurance that's... company wouldn't disclose all of that to me. They like sent you she... a letter and you don't a have it. A denial letter and no, to reach out to No, that's what you're telling me. That's hearsay, sir. Okay. That's hearsay. It's not hearsay if you bring it in to show it to me. Understood. So what I'm telling you is this is an incident where, in my judgment, you have two innocent people who were both victims of an irresponsible driver. And if her insurance company, for some reason, and I don't know what it is that's for her to take up with her insurance company, I don't know whether she's underinsured or whether they determined, after looking at the same things that I determined, that the accident wasn't her fault. So you can't tell me what they wrote because you didn't bring that letter. And we're talking about True. something that you yeah, got a month ago. Understood. Okay, okay you good. Then you, go through your, you. then go through your homeowners because your case is dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. The defendant says she chose to drive into my house instead of hitting another car. Both are equally as dangerous, and that cost me. I didn't want to hit five or six other cars, so I just did what I thought was best. You know, I found out because it's a very public street. Uh, many people uh, know that community, so people reached out. It was just everything happened so fast. I can't explain the energy. It was just like, I'm stuck. You know, my car just got stuck, and I was just like, hey, I'm just glad I didn't hurt anybody else. Because they saw that it was a very horrible accident. That's all I was happy I was still here. Not the car, not the house, me. I'm glad I'm still here to go home my son. No, the plaintiff really hurt himself with those photos of the defendant's car, and he didn't even notice. I don't think he even notices still. <laughs> but she had no proof in front of her, no papers, no photos of what her car looked like, so she would have no way of showing that the accident was not her fault. But he proved that the accident was not right. her fault based on the photos of the car and just the situation in which her car got hit. But that's the reason that people have insurance. So I agreed with your sentiment about use it. That's, that's its entire purpose. And I think that if he would have come in here and said, okay, I will put it through insurance, but I have a $5,000 deductible. I felt like you might have been more inclined to give him a portion yeah. of that, yeah. since neither of them were really at fault. They were right. both victims of a hit and run. But I would have respected that more if he had chosen to use home, his own homeowner's insurance oh, as opposed to right. going after another victim. She wasn't at fault, she and really, he knew that. She really wasn't at fault. Yeah. She really wasn't at fault. And as we discussed a moment ago, the suggestion that she should have gone into the, <laughs> to the left where there was an oncoming traffic rather than veering to the right and hit something yeah. that was a stationary object. It was definitely the safer option. And in that yeah. and in a second, second moment, she, made, she was lucky that she made, made that, that decision. You never right. know, someone else could have lost their life. Right.
Case 2153, Fallis versus Mixed All parties, please step forward. Elizabeth Fallis is suing her former friend, Christy Mazenbach, for two kayaks and an assault. Miss Fallis, it is your claim you and the defendant were friends, been friends for a while. Yes. Your allegations are twofold. First, you say that the defendant assaulted you after a party. Mm, yes. You weren't injured as a result of that assault. You didn't seek medical attention, but you said you had some scratches and that she hit you. Yes. Okay. So she was on top of me. I was scratching, hitting, pulling, trying to just get away. I don't think she really remembers everything, and it just happened so fast, but I was finally able to leave and get out the home with my daughter safely. Okay, bad behavior. Okay. Bad behavior? Elizabeth Fallis claims her former friend Christy Masonbach owes for two kayaks and an assault. There was no medical treatment. There was some drinking that went on that night. Yes. But the thrust of your complaint is that you gave the defendant two kayaks that you had purchased. Okay. Because the defendant has a piece of property and you didn't have a place to store them. And you asked if you could store them at the defendant's home. Correct. Okay. She said, yes, you're no longer friends after this kerfuffle. It took place after a party, and you would like the two kayaks back. Correct. When did you purchase them? I bought them on April 29, 2020. From whom? This lady and her mother were selling them on Facebook Marketplace. They were moving out of state, and her mom could no, couldn't take them with her. So um, I, I have the messages of those two, but I bought them on Facebook. And how much did you pay? Uh, 320 or 350 sorry. For both of them or each? For both of them. And when did you begin storing them at the defendant's? I brought them over the next day after I bought them because I live in an up upstairs apartment. I had nowhere to keep them. So she has a, a house that she lives in, so it was, it was a better situation for them. Where are you living now? I still live in an upstairs apartment. Where are you going to put the kayaks? I was planning on storage or maybe find a family member who has a home to take them to. But to basically probably buy a storage. That's pretty expensive to keep them in storage. If you paid $350 for the two of them two years ago. Have you used them in two years? I bought them this year, this April 2022. Oh, 2022. Sorry, yeah, 22. Okay. Have you used them? Yeah, I use them, I use them often with my uh, daughter. She's five and autistic. Have you used them with a the defendant? No. Have you used the kayaks? Uh, personally, I have not yet. I haven't had the chance to. Just to say, you have not? I have not yet, no. Okay, you acknowledge the fact that the plaintiff, who was then your friend, brought them over for you to store. You're not friends anymore. She wants them back. Why not? Um, so I would like to kind of go back to the beginning where, like, the assault happens, just so that you can kind of ex uh, I'll, understand. I'll that. get to this. Okay. It, the, assault um, is, the assault is not the important part of this case. Okay. Um, so the kayaks, originally, it was a deal that if I was to keep them at my house, that we could both use them. When she wanted them back, I just didn't necessarily feel like that was fair because the original agreement was that um, they were kind of almost both ours. I just didn't have the opportunity to use them yet. Okay. All right. Well, now you're not friends anymore. Now she wants them back. So she's going to pick up the kayaks within five days. If you don't pick them up within five days, you're out of luck. Do you understand? I understand. Okay. Good. So within five days from today's date, we'll prepare an order. You can pick up the kayaks. Now, you want to proceed with the assault part of your case? Yes. Okay. Show me pictures of what the injuries were that you sustained. I don't have any photos. I had a different phone at the time. And Just a second. So you don't have any photos. Do you have any medical reports? I don't. Okay. This alleged assault happened on what date? Um, it was August 17th, 2022. Were you both out that night or were you having a party in a house? So how, what happened was her girlfriend had cheated on her and they broke up and she invited me and a couple other friends to the home where we were there, my daughter was also there, where we were hanging out, we were talking, trying to have a good time because she was having such a, a bad time. And um, I ended up falling asleep at some point. I went to go sleep with my daughter in the room. Everybody had left maybe around 12, p 12 a.m. And she came into the room wanting to talk, wanting someone to be there with her. Um, but I was asleep. I'm not a very happy 
person to be woken up to. So I told her no, like we'll talk in the morning. She wasn't okay with that. She started getting mad. So she started getting upset and my daughter was next to me. So I was like, well, then I'm gonna leave. And so I tried to walk out. She grabbed me, she threw me to the ground. Um, she's stronger than me. So she was on top of me. I was scratching, hitting, pulling, trying to just get away. My daughter was screaming and crying. Um, she's autistic, so she doesn't really understand what was going on, but she was highly upset. She was screaming no. And I was eventually able to like get up and try to leave. She followed me to the garage. Um, I just tried to push and push and try to just get away from her, but I don't think she really remembers everything, and it just happened so fast, but I was finally able to leave and get out the home with my daughter safely. Okay, good. Okay, bad behavior. Bad behavior. I agree. Bad behavior? Mm. Okay. <sighs> I wish I had a photograph. Okay, within five days, pick up your kayaks. Are we done here? Can I explain my end or no? What? Can I explain my end or no? You did explain your end. You said you didn't think it was okay. fair when she wanted her kayaks back because we were gonna use them together. Mm. But now you're not gonna use them together because you don't like each other anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna use them together, so she's gonna get them back. Alrighty. Great, perfect, thank you. This court is adjourned. There was a lot more to the story than happened, but unfortunately, the, I guess the best outcome would be just to go ahead and give her back her kayak, so. It shouldn't have gone to this point. I should have got him back after the incident. It should have, for adults, it should have went way smoother. There was a lot more uh, insult that happened, like on both ends. Um, it wasn't necessarily the whole full truth. I think she's just going through a lot um, with whatever she's going on with with her ex, and just I feel like it just got taken out on me. Because we were like sisters before, and things just kind of, you know, go south, and unfortunately, I, you know, we lost her friendship over that. So we've been friends since middle school, so I don't, I don't know what the future holds, but I hope maybe one day we can talk and we can work things out. Only time will tell. I think probably the only thing that bothered me in that case was.